Objective three in topic one is to find graph features algebraically of a quadratic function. So if you're given a quadratic function now, the actual equation, can you find the same graph features algebraically as you found in objective two? When you were given a picture of the graph, you went through and found the vertex all the way through the domain and range, x and three, x intercept, y intercepts, and positive or negative. So all those graph features you found off of a picture we're going to find the same graph features, but now we're going to be given a quadratic function, all right? And so it's the, goal. the goal is still the same of objective three. You're going to find all these pieces of information within this graph, or within this little chart. And I don't have domain and range in that chart, but that's still an objective as well. I just didn't put it in this one, or in that chart. But during your practice, you will find domain and range as well. And as you venture into this objective, you're going to be working through two sub-objectives, I guess. It's going to be standard form and vertex form. So if you're given a quadratic function, they can either come in standard form or vertex form. Now, both of these things, both of these formats should be reviewed for you. You should have seen them in Algebra 1. We have talked about standard form. We have not talked about vertex form. And so I'm going to introduce both of them to you in this video and then I'm going to relate both of them to this graph up here and see how they relate to one another because again the same function can be written in either form and either form is good for different reasons and we'll talk about those specific reasons as we get further into the module but let's start with standard form y equals ax squared plus b x plus c. Hopefully that looks familiar to you. It should. We've been talking about that before. And then a, b, and c are all real numbers. And technically a and b are coefficients and c is the constant. c is a constant number because it doesn't have a variable with it and so it would never change. And moving over to vertex form then, this is Again, this is the first time I mentioned it in Algebra 2, but you should have seen this already. But y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now, if you notice, the a term is the same in both equations, but the vertex form has, what's, has an h value and a k value. The h and k value are the vertex. That's why it's called vertex form. And that's actually very convenient because in standard form you have to do a little bit of math to find the vertex. But if you're given a function in vertex form, the vertex is already given to you. All right. And there's a couple pieces of information that are very important to know about the vertex, but I'm going to talk about those in a different video. And let me let me say too that this is a little confusing, but h, whatever number h is in the position of h up here, that is the x value of the vertex and whatever no number is in the k position is the y value. Alright, and at times there might not be an h or a k and if they don't exist then the x or the y value is going to be zero. Now let's look at, to finish this video, because again the objective is, if given a standard form quadratic function, can you find all the pieces of graph features that I want? And if given a vertex form of a quadratic function, can you find the same features as well? Now this graph right here, in blue, has two equations. I'm going to write standard form and vertex form. And again, both of these formats are the same function, just written in different formats. The standard form of this equation is y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. So if you notice, that is in my a, b, c format. The a in this case is negative 1, the b is 4, and the c is negative 3. So I can put that. a equals negative 1 b equals 4, and c equals negative 3. Alright, so that, that's important pieces of information to know, and you should be able to identify the a, b, and c if given a standard form quadratic function. Now the vertex form of this same quadratic function, the picture in blue up here, the parabola, 
is y equals negative, and again it's negative because it's opening downward, it's negative x minus 2 squared plus 1. Now if you notice, and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth in a different video of the vertex, but this vertex, the h value is 2, and the k value is 1. All right. Now, some of you might be thinking in this moment, the h value looks to be negative 2 in the equation. But it, the, by default, in the vertex form, it's x minus h. And so, in this case, h isn't negative 2, it's just x minus a number, and the number happens to be 2. All right? And we'll talk a little bit more if that's confusing in a later video, but I'm just introducing the concept right now. Now, this is super convenient because then now we have the vertex. The x value of 2, the y value of 1. And if you look on the graph, the vertex is indeed 2, 1. So if you're ever given vertex form, you can immediately find the vertex and start drawing your graph. That's why it's so convenient to have. Now, standard form, there's a formula that we're going to use to find the vertex and then go from there. But this is the introduction to this objective. If you're given quadratic functions, so I would go ahead and square these in just so you know, or you have an example to see what is standard form and what is vertex form. If you're given a function, whether it be standard form or vertex form, can you find whether or not the parabola opens up or down, has a max or min, what the vertex is, the axis of symmetry, the y-intercept and x-intercepts, and also the domain range. So that is this objective. So that's the goal moving forward. And within the next videos, I'm going to introduce how to actually go about that process if given a standard form, quadratic function, and I've broken it up into parts. And then afterwards, there'll be some practice to do that, and then afterwards I'm going to say what happens then if you're given vertex form of a function. Alright, so the next objective would be find it if you're given vertex form of a function. And you'll practice that, and hopefully by the end of all of those videos, you will be able to master, if I'm given a function, whether it's in standard form or vertex form, I can find all the graph features that I need.